Let's see. 32. It's funny that 32 thousandths feels like a hundred thousandths when I'm running this mill. So this is the Z32 GP Bolton Tools desktop or benchtop milling machine. And I have run it pretty hard for, I don't know, six, seven years, something like that. And now I'm getting signs of a thrust washer that is not working correctly anymore. So I'm going to dig into this guy, do some maintenance. Yeah. Into the gearbox we go. Stand by. Okay, another quick bit. I'm going to show more details on putting this thing back together than trying to get it apart. <laughs> yeah. Um, if anybody has one of these machines and wants to take it apart, I'll show you all the tricks, right? Stand by. So there it is. Quite frankly, everything in the box looks really good. And then over here on the table is the rest of it. Actually, this motor over here is not part of it. Ignore that. That's the broken one I got from two lots of thieves or whatever they're called. So yeah. And here I see where the problem lies. It's got a nut that tightens the bearings in the quill. And those bearings have relaxed enough for me to have 32 thousandths of play while the thing is cold. Um, probably more when it's hot because that tube's gonna get longer, you know. Yep. So now I'm gonna like, get seals out, get some bearings out. I gotta order some parts probably, go to command. And then we get to see a very detailed story of how to put it back together. Yahoo. Here's a quill. This is the problem. It's not the quill, actually. It's the bearings. These guys. Chinese bearings. Anyway. Since this thing is adjusted with a nut... You could just pop it out and tighten it and put it back in. But I'd rather not do that. I'd rather get some really good, high precision bearings that can take a preload and work for a long time. You know, the other thing to remember is this guy, these things are not lubricated by the oil in the gearbox. They're greased like wheel bearings. So periodically you might have to go in there and do something with them. I had noticed it was getting hot in addition to have that 30 thousandths play. It's really annoying trying to cut a 10 thousandths steep cut when the quill can lift up 30 thousandths, you know. All right. So while I'm waiting, I've just been cleaning up parts. You can see all of it here, you know, there's the worm gear that runs it up and down the quill and, or you know, the precise control of the quill. That's a cross bolt, cross shaft for the quill. There's the shaft, the inner shaft, all the gears. This guy's all cleaned up. Um, I make it a habit when I go and tear a machine all the way apart and clean it out and maybe replace some parts, I paint them gray. It's just me. It's how I keep track of stuff I've been inside of. I didn't really get inside this guy, but I painted it anyway, so. And there's a bunch of bits outside. As you can see, pile electrical all still hooked to the DRO. And the motor just cleaned it up. And I'm waiting for bearings. So while I wait for the bearings, I watch paint dry. Uh, I ordered a bunch of bearings 
two of each so that I can uh, have a spare set. Oddly enough, the one that goes down in the bottom of the quill down here, you can't get a nice bearing. You can get a cheap bearing, like a $12 one, but you can't get a precision bearing that size, apparently. Well, I went to command and they can't match it. At least the guy I talked to couldn't match it. In any event, I decided to get a different style bearing anyway. That's like a wheel bearing from a car is what's over there. Like a tapered roller bearing. And I mean, they're okay, but I'm putting an annular thrust bearing in there so I can get a little bit better control. So, that's what I'm at. Watch them paint dry. Ain't it grand. So, okay. Now we're going to talk about the inside of this guy. Um, I'm looking down from the top, obviously. I've got the cover off, and all the shafts and the gears are out. But you can see that there's stuff left. Let me point that out. So, as I said earlier, I'm going to do the assembly. So, I start at the end, you know. So, anyway, this guy right here is a shifter for high and low. And this one over here is a shifter for the three possible speeds of low and high. So, they're held in by this pin. This pin's held in by a cap screw, and this is where you could take the shaft out if you wanted. I do not need to take the shafts out, so I have not touched them. And here's the other one down here, similar. There's a grub screw or a set screw that's holding it in. And I've seen a couple of the set screws that have pegs on the end, you know, like go into a little recess. I don't know if that's like that or not. This is where the the seal hub mounts where the upper gear goes down through for the quill to move and there's a couple of seals up in here and they're held in by three cap screws you can see in the bottom there's three bearings little tiny ones I think I got the number I can't remember what it is right now but they are pressed into the bottom I did not take them out because I don't need to but there's an important tip about these anytime a gearbox has bearings in a blind hole down in the bottom and a little bore like these are whenever that happens the shafts in here and it's running and it gets full of oil down in there so bear in mind as soon as you try and lift the cover off if the shaft lifts up with the cover and comes up to the top the oil will run down inside these guys and then you can't get it back in because there's a hydraulic lock in there you gotta really try and work it over time to get it down in there and so it can displace that fluid if you try and hit it in with a hammer you know press it in real fast it's liable to just take that oil and push the shaft out again <laughs> In other words, it won't go in. You can't make it go in there. The, the point of the exercise being, when you take it apart, you gotta make sure and clean all this oil out of there, and then the shafts will just set right in. So, that's what the inside looks like. I mean, basically, if I were to took the shifters out, it would just be the casting, you know, and the three bearings, so, nice. So now I'm going to start reassembly. Okay. So this is the little hub that goes down in here. And it has, it came with two seals back to back, a double seal. Because when this is inside there, it'll be like this and the oil level will be up about here. So you don't want the oil going through this spot and running down into the quill and out the bottom. So the first step is to 
put the seals in it. So these ones were easy to get. They're an exact metric replacement made by Chicago Rawhide. I should say sold by Chicago Rawhide because they're made in China. <laughs> but CR will demand a certain level of quality and verifiability about the materials and a quality control that they don't deliver bad ones. So this is like a 30 by 42 by 7 seal. So I'm going to get up close to show you something in case anybody that doesn't know how seals work. Let's see. Where am I? There's a seal. See on the back? This one. Whoa. Size 3427. If you look at it, this is the seals coming down this way. And you see the back, there's a shorter area. And inside here, you can actually see. A little spring wrapped all the way around. That spring is trying to close this guy tighter. And the oil that you're trying to hold from going through the seal is on the same side as that spring or where the gap is. This is the outside of the seal. This will not keep things from leaking in very effectively but it doesn't matter because it's inside the gearbox you know facing down it's so this ends pointing towards the quill so it goes in this guy like that just like that and I happen to have a little I don't know if that's gonna work I might have to find a bigger press, but let's see. I'm going to stop it for a second and find a better thing to push it with. Okay. So I managed to find a thing. So it's also important when you put a seal in that you push only on the outer edge because you don't want to damage it. It's a little crooked. Let's see. A little on the crooked side of the line. There it goes. Getting better. There you go. Trying to get it to get close enough to the edge because I got to put another one on top of it. Quite frankly, I'm going to reset and use the press. Hold on. All right, I'm in the other room now. I'm going to push this guy down in there, hopefully. A little crooked. There it goes. I'm not going to go. Well, I think I already went all the way. Yeah, it's right there against the other side. And then you put the other one right on top of it, going the same way. Throw it on the floor. Let's see. I'll go with this straight one first. Okay, right down flush. Throw my little 
things in the other hole. And there's there's where it looks. All right, guys. Full on. Sorry about the wind noise, but it's what is it outside 110 today? 13, 113. So I got fans going. Anywho, now I'm ready to put this guy in, right? First thing you do, whenever you're going to install a seal in a in its place, is you want to lube this guy up. So um, you don't have to like pack it full of grease like a bearing, but you want it nice and saucy. And the reason you want it nice and saucy is that oftentimes when you put new seals in either they do not get lubricated by whatever they're holding in I don't care sometimes it's there's nothing it, they're like keeping dirt out so to speak or even if they are lubricated by the oil in there when you first start it up and start spinning, there may be a few seconds, even more, that there is no lubrication and it can burn a seal in a second. If a tight seal on a dry shaft spins for a second or two, it can actually burn the seal right off of there, burn the tip, so enough said. So, this little critter has a silicone sealer on the inside, so not affiliated with Permatex, but Ultra Black Permatex is the only silicone I would ever use around uh, stuff like this. Engines, car engines. I built a lot of 350 Chevys and used solely silicone for the valley seals. But here it doesn't need a massive amount. Just needs a film. See if I get enough without dibble. Maybe a bit more. You just want to make sure that the grease, that the gearbox oil isn't running in between the flange and down into the quill. So, so I kind of. It's a very nice machine fit, by the way. I had a hard time getting it out. You could turn it, but you couldn't pull it up. So I happen to know it goes just like this. I'm not going to try and push it down in because there's a step. I'm going to try and get it in there and get a screw started. There's one. So you got to juggle it around and get all three screws started at the same time. Come on now, where are you at? Uh, over that away. Maybe I'll try this guy. Okay, oh, and then this guy kinda dropped in. See if it'll turn a little bit. Oh, there it is. Almost there. Let's see. There it is. Kind of. Okay, guys. Sweet! I hope my hands weren't in the way the whole time. The thing is, a flange like this, it goes down into a a bore you got to get it started real straight and I am actually pulling it in with these screws it's a little tight not enough to worry 
but you just walk around watch that thing settle into its little hole I think that young man that put this together put too much sealant in it but because there was quite a bit but that's all right and these just got to be good and tight all right very nice so there's that part the hub and seal in place all righty so the next step i'm a little blow it out a bit stand by for noise Is this guy? I'm gonna blow it off a little bit. It's been fairly protected. Okay, so this end. That's what goes in one of those bearings down there. And precisely this bearing. And it's actuated by the shift lever in here. So that's the friggin' dog on the end of the. Some people call them shoes. The shifter shoe so this is all oily but what I got to do is go down there and set it in there set it in the shifter set it down in right and then let me grab this other one Counter shaft, same basic thing. Put the shoe on a shifter. Bring this guy in here, slow and easy. Find the groove, and then lower the shifter with this knob. And I know from experience it's got to be tucked in pretty close to right there. See there? See there's the... Yep, everything's working. And then the last one is the, the motor shaft. This is the shaft that brings from the, the motor in. And this one... I did not get another bearing for because it's just unnecessary. And that one goes down there and meshes with the main shaft. There it goes. And that little hole is a little tight. So there. Oh, there's the old ones. And this guy goes right there. Sweet! Now I can get the top on. Okay, more fans. Sorry. So what, I'm, what I want to do is put these two bearings down in here. And nothing's better for pushing a bearing than the one that came out. Right. So before I do that, I got to put a snap ring in the back. So we're here where it won't fall in a 
more. Outside. You're all, you're okay as long as you don't push the old bearing into the groove at the same time. Make sure if it starts to twist, you immediately reset. How about this way so you can see? It's a rough hole, man. Okay, so right now I'm about to go in with this, that other bearing. SKF bat bearing. See. Made in Argentina. So I have an Argentine bearing. Boy, that slid in there too easy. Now I got it stuck in there. Yeah. Well, give me a chance. I'm gonna have to go knock it out of there. Tommy, Bozo shows up. Okay, so all I really did is I went through here, tapped this guy out. And then went around this edge and just tapped it real carefully to seek those bearings against the snap ring on the other side. So now I can put the snap ring in there. Yep, it's in there. Okay, so all I gotta do now is reset up and press this down onto here. Yeah, 
That should be fun. So, I kind of got lucky. I got an aluminum block underneath that is sitting against the inner race of this bearing. And I had started this and put it in a freezer and got it real cold and just got the tip to start. And it just fit in here without moving anything, so. Uh. We got going. It's gotta go through two bearings on the way through there. Okay, now I've hit the bottom. That means it's hitting that piece. Uh. Not quite, it's hitting the other, it's just going through the other race. So let's see, I'd be more comfortable. With something like that, rather than going right against that shaft in there. Let's see if it'll decide to go through. There she goes. This is a pretty tight bearing. I think I'm at the edge now. Not quite. Yeah, that's a tight squeeze. There it is. It's almost there. So... See, now it's flush right here. I need to reset. Okay. So I did, I dropped this guy down one and it's hit, sitting against these cross pieces right on the end of the shaft. And I've got a tube here that is the same size as the inner race. So I'm pushing against the inner race only not on the outer ones so i just got to get it down far enough to get the snap ring in so go down here and stop right about there and there it is and it turns that's it nice All right, so I'm ready to put this thing together. Last thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a, well this thing don't need a grease, but this does. And a little bit on the snub over here. But, grease off everything. I'll put a thin layer of silicone seal around this guy. Go inside of the holes. And I always go outside all the screw holes. So Nothing seeps through the edge. Well, that's getting better. Try to avoid getting the silicone seal in the screw holes. You can. There's usually room down there for a little bit, but yeah. I blew them all out, so I know they're open. So it's going to be tricky. I can guarantee that because I've got to go around this bearing, get it to slide through, and get these three bearings to slide through, and line up the gears. And it may be, uh, may be a little bit tough. Okay.
Come on now. Yikes. Kind of starting. Sort of, kind of. If I can get in there. I've already got enough silicone on me. Trying to keep this guy at the right angle. There's this holes right here that go through. There it is. Trying to line up those bearings. Okay. Gears are still turning. Okay, I can see I get my flashlight. Uh-huh. It looks like stuff's out of position. Let's see. You have to trust these screwdriver to hit with a hammer, right? Yeah, let's see. This guy's kind of Stop and reset. Yahoo! All right, problem solved. Turns out that this little bearing can't go in there with this gear. Is interference. It's so close I didn't realize it. So I popped it off the shaft. The other thing is interesting is had these big plugs. They're in here. I knocked the one out of the back, throw it on the floor. So I can see in there to tap that bearing onto the shaft when I get into it. Yep. One more pain in the ass. Yeah. It's kind of hard to get apart. If you know it, it's easy to get together. So you got to lift it up and get this thing all loose. And it's because of this guy stuck in there. So there's a threaded hole here in this plastic. You could maybe yank that out of there and go in there and tap the shaft down through there while you're trying to get it off. But yeah, now I'm going to set up to try and put the cover back on again. All right, I'm going to try again. Hate to waste good silicone seal, man. Let's see. Clean my finger. Let's check. So, should be able to set this guy down in here. Line up all the fucking dealy bobs. Okay. So right now we're sitting on this bearing over here. I'm gonna 
bring it down, isn't it? Okay, now it's sitting on this little bearing inside. I gotta get a better part. You want a nice flat punch for that. Everybody started. What's over here? There it went. Now it's not, the bearing's not moving up. There it comes. There it went. Uh-oh, hope I didn't screw something up in there. Sucker. Hmm. like it's working so what a pain make a thing you gotta kind of beat together that's kind of uncool but I can tell you that I worked for Peugeot back in the 80s I was a master tech for Peugeot and when I went to their transmission rebuilding class they got that they said you're going to get all the books and all the tools you need to rebuild a transmission in a Peugeot I was like cool I got a hammer and several different punches and a book and it was like all the bearings take off with punches yeah, that's the French for it beat it to death beat it into submission I got them all snug down where they're hitting. Classic X pattern. Oh, I see sealant. Now, the thing about gearboxes, too, is when they're dry and clean like this, they're noisy. So you don't worry too much about some funny noises, but unless it's binding and stuff. Let's try it again. Well. Wow. Seems like it's kind of bound up there. Take a break. Something's under bind. All right. So, as you, if you watched, I got it together, and the last half a turn on the bolts were really tightened down. It got so tight I couldn't move the motor. I mean, I couldn't move it. I couldn't turn it up here like this. See. And so I pulled this plug out, and sure enough this bearing in here didn't come all the way up against the snap ring so I took my slide hammer with a five millimeter bolt in it because there's threads in them and I 
tapped it back up and now everything's Bob's your uncle is perfect got all the gears everything sounds perfect and it's ready to finish putting together Yahoo I love it when I get it together right even if it is the second time so let's see okay that's low speed let's see high speed that's a slow medium high yep so there it's really kicking up nice I'm happy all right so I put this guy on two by fours in here and lifted it up and then I that's how you get it on and off. Set it on a bunch of blocks, crank it down till it sets on it, and then you know then you can get the bolts in. It's still a pain, but now it's like these holes is where stuff goes through. I use a thing like this. I mean, just about everybody knows about this, right? It's just a some sort of rod that fits in a drill, and it tapes some sandpaper to it. And I go in here and you're not going crazy with it because it's a bore, but it's not a precision bore either. This is for a lock. Just go through there and see if I can knock the, the dirt out, you know? Because it's a pretty dirty casting. That's working. See, that particular bore is for this. It's the lock for the quill to lock it in place. And it goes in just like that. There's wedges, obviously. When you tighten it up, it clamps against the quill. So there it is. One more part in. The other thing that I did at this point is once I got this guy hung and pretty close to, to tight, I could just move it. And then I put my, this long straight edge. And I've got to uh, adjust the the little scale back here. So, see now, I got a gap on the bottom, not on the top. Now I got a gap on the top. tiniest bit got to kind of get them closer to tight so I can tighten it without it deflecting okay where's that now Definitely contacting top first. This is not absolute precision, but it's it's a good starting point. Still hitting up here a little bit more in the bottom. I'm gonna try and snug it up right there. See, right now we're tad high up there. 
Well, that's probably about as good as I've gotten so far. I'm happy enough with that. Let's see. Yep. This guy's perfectly lined up. I had adjusted it before and then I did some stuff and I was checking it again right now. Cool. Now we put the motor on. It's got like a key right here. And there's a slot in here. The key kind of likes to go into. Or used to. Sucker just fell right down. Hold on. Uh, sucker. When your magnet's too fat for the hole, make it longer. Just here, just in case. Typical, I had to force it in and then it fell out. Double of grease on it to hold it in the in the uh, keyway. If it falls out, you're gonna know it. It won't go in. Okay. Now, let's see. This guy goes like this. It's like this. Kind of clock the keyway where I might have a chance to hit it first try so I can need a little more turn to it. Let's see. in its hole. There it goes. Yahoo! Got a little Mozart playing in the background. Keep your nerves calm, get your, keep your zen pointed in the right direction. Just get a couple, three turns on the cap screws. Make sure all four of them are finding a nice little hole they want to screw into. There it is. Mas. Uno más. Come on now.
kind of got the wrong wrench out here for this. Yep. That's how it's done. Stung them up and it's all done. Very nice. Very nice. So, the quill, I'm waiting for a bearing right now. Hopefully it'll get here quick and I can finish this series, but yeah, about done. So, just for general information, you don't need to take it apart to get the quill out. You just, we'll see that at the end. The quill comes out without any of what I've done so far. So, as a reference in the future, if it gets loose, like mine did, where this guy would go up and down with a, a thing, all you gotta do is take this bottom area out and drop the quill out, and you tighten it up, put it back in, it's about an hour's worth of work. So, in my case, I didn't know how it came apart, wasn't sure, and I wanted to look in the gearbox anyway, because I've changed the oil before, and I had never popped the cover. The length, I can take the cover off real easy, and it doesn't cause any mayhem, but this guy, it don't come off that easy. <laughs> So, everything in there is perfect. It looks great. So you notice these got overhangs and common tools and work, so I get a little five millimeter end bit. That's what I use. Now you can use it a couple of ways. You can stick it in there. Pull this number, which is quick for good for quick tightening. Pardon me while I get to the other side. Notice I tighten. Now I'm going to the opposite corner. And it turns out back here there's one that's hard to get to too, and it's and give me some trouble. Just barely got enough room to hope to get the bit in. Don't drop it on the floor. Fat fingers and a teeny tiny bit. Okay, now we're in the business. The other thing laying down tight. I'm torquing it pretty good initially. The washers on these little screws were coned out from being pulled into a hole that's bigger than the than the diameter of the bolt. I put them on upside down to push that cone the opposite direction this time, so it makes it seat better in my view. Mozart in the background, this woman screaming. Okay, now if I want to figure out whether or not there's anything going wrong with it, I'd have to put the shaft in there, but right now it's stuck on a 
on the you know half assembled quill. So so far so good. Okay, I did a couple things off camera. Basically this box. There's a frame here that screws to that with two screws and then the rest all hangs on it. It keeps all the switches inside. And I hooked up this guy. Check this out. I had a, my brother has a 3D printer and he made me a little cover for a broken one. And I liked it so much. I put it on this mill. It goes with the blue. It's very nice. I just sent him the measurements and he spit one out. Our brother's actually a true genius in the family, but I'm not going to tell him. Anyhow, so then I actually, there's just four screws that screw this on and a couple of knobs. It's real quick and easy. I've got tie wrap holding this scale up so it doesn't fall down. So, all right, everything's back together. I don't want to test it because there's no oil in it. Yahoo, I got to get some oil. And I'm still waiting for a bearing to finish. Might even be here today. Okay. Since these guys are not lubricated by the oil in the system, they're lubricated with grease. And basically we're talking about a wheel bearing here and on the other side is a radial ball bearing. Both of them use the same high pressure lubricant grease like a synthetic. So what I hope to show So right about here, right? So you can see it. Put a blob of grease in my hand. So, you can see I got a bunch of grease. I think I'm a little too close, so. Not that far. That looks better. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in there with this bearing and scrape off my palm right here. See how that goes? See here? Scrape off there, scrape off there. Notice what I'm doing? I'm cleaning it off of my glove. It's a perfectly clean glove, so the only thing on there is the grease. And the idea is to push it down against there, and it will start to do something. Let's see. I don't know if you can see this. See the grease coming out between the balls right there? Where am I? Right there. Right there. So you just keep going around. Try and get the grease to go through the gap between the bearing. And you can see it coming out real fast it just squeezes out like a tube of uh, toothpaste you know coming out to between the bearing rollers that's the only way to do a proper bearing pack by the way is to verify that whatever method you're using to pack a bearing is going to going to be consistent with getting all the air out of those rollers and leaving only grease. Now with a big handful of it, I drop it into its cup. See, there it is in its cup. Now, get a hold of this guy. This is 
the annular ball bearing. And that's going to be a little different getting it in there. This guy, I'm going to squeeze it through from the top. And you can see how you're slowly running out of grease because it's going down in there. And what you want it to do is to be coming out the other side. Now get down with this one, you'll get a good look at how it should be. So I'm going around here with grease. And then I'm trying to get it to go through the hole by using my thumb to force it down in there. See what it looks like. Well, that's a pretty picture. See how that is? See how it's coming through? Every ball's got grease coming through between it. So then I go around the top side. I've heard various theories on having too much grease being bad. Um, experts, quasi-experts. I never really saw anybody who had a piece of paper as an expert telling me that too much grease was bad. But I do know that if you get too much grease in a cavity and it expands it'll start pushing things out. It can push a seal out, you know. Because grease is sort of a fluid halfway between, I don't know. I guess it's a really um, cold fluid right now. So it's real stiff. So let me get hands clean. So that's about it. Now I gotta put it in that, this guy. So, should be able to do something like this. I'm not just, I'm not going to put much, I just put a little film of grease around the inside of this guy where this bearing is going to seat. Should go in there pretty easy. See, look at that. It just slid right in. Oh, nice. I like it. So, come in with this puppy. See what we got here. A couple of threads. Sometimes that's all you need. A spanner nut. It's not really wanting to grab it yet. I think it's in there. It's in their ways. Can't turn on my fingers. So there it is. I'm gonna mess around and tighten it up. I don't need to need to get back and run film for the next hour. Okay, so lacking a proper spanner wrench for this thing, I just had to improvise. But basically what I did is I took this nut and I screwed it all the way down until it got real tight not like massively tight but you can feel where all the bearings and the races seat into the where they're supposed to be and 
so now I'm going to put it in there permanently, and it's got a spider washer, we used to call these, it's a tabbed washer is another word for it, um, it's got a little tab right here, if you see it, that goes into one of these splines, and when it's completely tightened, you can bend one of these tabs up into one of these holes to make sure it doesn't come loose. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to measure a little bit here. Fingertip measurements. Okay, so it's right about there. Kind of tight. Ooh. And it just so happens that a tab winds up right there. But how much preload is that? Because here's the thing when you tighten a tapered roller bearing into a hole, into a bore with a nut like this, what you're actually doing is pushing them together, tighter against the race inside. And every bearing has a specification on what kind of preload that it's allowed to tolerate under given conditions. The last bearing didn't have enough because it got loose, or it had too much and it made it loose. So right now, I can unscrew this by hand, and that's pretty much zero preload. To figure that out, I can just see if it moves. So there's zero preload. I want to get it just a tiny bit of preload. And you know what? It's about where that tab lines up. You turn this jack around. This tab I got it started now if I run this thing a while and it starts getting loose again I'll know I gotta go in there and tighten it or look at it but Okay, it's locked. There it is. Nice. talked before about making sure these little lip seals are lubricated really good so they don't burn Well, counter guy, it's a nice guy. Missed it by uh, three millimeters. 72, 75. No, no fit. No silver. 
au moins non. Parce que c'est tout le monde euh, un paquet de masqués, quoi. Get the dirt off this bottle. You always want to make sure you're not putting dirt into a machine when you're servicing it, which is, in a lot of cases, the true cause of failures. If anybody out there that does work on their cars and wonder why some of the Newer vehicles do not have a dipstick for the automatic transmission. It's because they figured out people were getting so dirt in there, checking them all the time. Anyway, so what I got here is Mobile Mobile DTE 26 is the name of it. But what's important is that it's hydraulic oil and it's ISO. VG 68. Now the VG, I mean that's another number, but 68. ISO 68. And if you look at the back, what the DTE stands for is it's got advanced wear additives. Anti-wear hydraulic oil. So this is the closest thing you can get to the oil that the producers of these machines put in them. So I'm going to go ahead and fill it up right now before I get the the quill finished because hey I got to make sure it ain't leaking. And I know I took dang near half a gallon out of it. Tell you what, I don't need to th leave this thing running while I dribble oil in. I'll get back later. Well, I went ahead and overfilled it a little bit because I couldn't see it too good, and I went ahead and took the the sight glass out and now I had a bit in there over the top so in a way it's good I got everything nice and wet and aside from there it is it's about a what a shame good oil but if there was a leak up in here where those seals are it would be coming out right now so I'm really pleased with that so now if I turn it on and forget that I didn't put oil in it so I'll, I'll, I always leave the filler plug loose and so I can look at it and see if it's not all the way in I, I need to look at it. Alrighty. Let me see. Turn the power on. Oop. Spinning. It's a lot quieter without that quill in there. Let's see. There's, that's high speed in position one. Oops. There's position two. Well, that must be, oh yeah. That's high speed. one.
so that's got to be three. And that's two. It's all working. Nothing leaking. Cool! Next step, I'm going to put a little bit of grease in these splines. Like I said, I don't like things being dry. The rest of it just gets a just a slimy coating. So these splines are going to go on it engage. Okay. Let's see. There it is. So now that part's in. Okay, now it's this guy. This is the adjustment. Again. When they build it, they're counting every friggin' drop of grease, but when you're maintaining your own machine, it's not so super critical. And like I said, everything else gets a kind of a coat on the inside, but not here. This cone is where it's going to be um, breaking. You don't want oil in there or grease. All right. Come on now. Hi. Now she's stuck. I think I'm going to try and get it on this one first. There it is. Get that guy like that. Come on now. There it is. You got to get the teeth lined up. All right, I'm gonna pop this out of here. Wipe that guy out. Like kind of. Find a dry spot on the rag. All right. What's it looking like? Okay. This little key goes right here. And then it's the T the crank handle. Come on. Okay, so everything's working. All righty, last bit coming up next. So now back on this side, got to put this guy in. It's kind of it only fits one way where there's a pin on straight up and down, so that's kind of clogged. And let me tell you, the holes aren't very precise either. Okay.
little binding going on somewhere. going in that's for sure I said the holes are really out of line I mean whoever the guy was that drilled them must have been Friday okay Ugh. not too sure about that there it goes that one went in Maybe it needs to sit down or something. Do the mild tap. Yep, that's where it's happy. Now here's the fiendish little part. Let's see. I'm going to turn it around. All right. Right here. So, there's a big spring goes right here. And that big spring as a keyhole slot on one on the end and you have to get this guy screwed down in like this and get that thing in there and get it to grab that and hook on I don't know if you can see it let's try terrible lighting huh See the keyhole slot up in there? That will have to, that engages with that screw. So come on now. This is the part that'll make you crazy. Probably take two hands and, and a, another hand. Yep. I'm gonna have to turn it off so I can go in there with a little hook and get it guided into there. So, hold on. Okay, so what I did was I used a thing like this. Get in there and get a hold of it while I could get over and get it to line up with that screw. Now see these notches? Those guys are how you set it to tension. So hold on, I gotta do, I gotta get my hands clean so I can do that part. So this guy, maybe you can see it or not, they're slots. It's relaxed right now and this guy's up all the way. And you go this way, the spring gets tighter. There's a little peg on the top and the bottom that you can line up to these slots. So what I'm going to want to do is... I've got to turn it. I got a few of them. So what I'm gonna do is put this guy in, see how it feels. Let's 
little retainer. Okay. So I gotta put this guy back on real quick. Seem to be doing anything, huh? Let's put it on here. Something ain't right. Hold on. We got something screwed up somewhere. Well, what it really is about. You see. Can't see it from here anyway, huh? This, part, this guy right here, this brake for this, you can't have any old grease in the wrong place or it slips. But as you can see, it's working good. Everything's nice and snug now, like new. It's got to get used to going up and down. But I, I didn't tighten it up a lot because I don't like it flying back up on its own. It can ruin one of these scales. So if I need to adjust it, I can later. So now a couple bits here and it's ready to run. Ah, I thought this was gone. Running it backwards right now. I started running at low speed for a couple minutes, forward and then backward. Now I'm putting a high speed and I'm running like 15, 20 seconds each way. You can hear the cyclical of a cluster shaft. Well, it is not cold, it's not hot, it's just slightly warm, it's been running constantly for a while. So now that I got it down all the way, I'm going to wipe it snout. Because I don't need a lot of grease just hanging around up here. But I like it. If I loosen it, something weird about this thing. 
has to be almost all the way out. Okay, 